the fam... On your side. Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please. Wait a moment. Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. Hmm. What do you think? Okay. Hey, and Mora, or trade anything you own. Of course not. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Grandma, is King Deshret really gonna come back from the? They're all waiting for you. already discussed things a bit. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? Very well. Are you sure this is gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. It's worth a try. The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. Uh, you're making Paimon nervous. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. I'll be careful. That's what I wanted to hear. Take care. Well, Traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. And based on your reaction, Things must have gone quite well. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. So you have my trust. <laughs> Candace gave us a compliment! Your deeds speak for themselves. you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today as I said to you when you arrived. Your safety is the most important thing. Only when you're safe can the plan be successful. 
So please, take care. You're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Stay safe, everyone. I'll be here, praying for you. Good luck. Hmm, sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hate them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah! Also, Candace told everyone to be careful! Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We must go beyond that and fully commit ourselves to it. I hope this is clear to you. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics, while others will fight on the front lines. Hmm... Speaking of the front lines, you don't look anything like a soldier. Of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic insight. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. Mercenary groups are facing constant danger every single day. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation, and you are a scholar! I'm not like the rest of them. Even among members of the same species, some will exhibit far more potential than others. This guy... <laughs> Hyman still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic! <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm... That reminds me... Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? It mentioned forbidden knowledge. You have a good memory. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think... Those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge. But the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, perhaps the Academia has also never understood the true nature of forbidden knowledge, and thus always approached the issue from the wrong direction. The Withering, Elazar, and the Sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Wait a second. Could it be that... Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Soul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. But if that's the case, what should we do? This is huge! Wait. 
Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? You mean, it's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? That whole, the world forget me thing? Hmm. In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Only by working with her to save Ermansoul can we completely resolve the problems Sumeru currently faces. To make sure we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. Where are we going? To an Aramite base. A familiar sight. It's all good. Whatever the boss says. Oh, you made it. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some technical work to do. Ah, it's the scribe. And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes. We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Aren't those devices for can knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? Look here. Huh? More can knowledge? Are you going to put more weird stuff into his head again? What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Hyman's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. The Academia should also have their own copy. And according to the plan we just came up with, Traveler, I want you to record something into this capsule. Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. You want us to record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand. But trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. It's best if you can do as I say. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Although it may feel like a trick, self-encouragement may be the most important tool we have. Hmm. Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. It's done. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? It's just a recording. There should be no negative effects. But what was the point of doing this? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it. 
And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? What do you mean? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born, and this device has always supported you during times of need. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh... A fool? A machine? A slave to orders. And that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. Hmm. But why would you need to identify the gray areas? You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. One might even say they're advantageous in the right hands. Things you're interested in are really out there. Are all Sumeru scholars like this? Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small projects? We are going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... modifications. The sunshine will eventually illuminate every hidden corner. I thought we agreed on a plan. How can you go back on your word? The plan is too radical and carries a high risk for casualties. I've given it a lot of thought. And in the end, I still can't agree to it. But it's still the best plan we have. Is a former Matra, you of all people should be able to see the bigger picture and recognize the innate advantages of our plan. I did. And that's how I saw the danger behind these so-called advantages. <sighs> Ahitham's plan is even more radical than I imagined. Huh? Why are you guys arguing? My friend, you're just in time. Why don't you help me persuade Sino? He's turned against our plan. We agreed to work out a plan at the meeting. As mercenaries, you're familiar with the local environment, so you'll take care of the specifics. But then, you went to Al Haytham for suggestions. Had I known Al Haytham would give you those kinds of suggestions, I would not have agreed to the plan. Look, you already know that we're all on the same side here, don't you? Mercenaries place a lot of importance on their bonds of friendship, but also will not hesitate to make sacrifices if they deem the situation to be sufficiently dire. <sighs> I'm sorry, but as things stand, I can't accept your principles. Seems you really do understand the ways of the desert. Traveler, Paimon. This is also something you should know. Rahman's plan is to have me work with the Caravan Reebok guards in my capacity as a Matra. We will arrest the mercenaries and escort them into Sumeru City. Wait! How can we work with the guards? We can't get through that wall easily, remember? Caravan Rebot would never let so many unregistered members of the Aramites enter Sumeru City. My plan will clear us of any possible suspicion, and also let us enter the city as a big group. 
There is no better way. That also sounds like something all Haytham told you. Am I right? Doesn't all Haytham know how dangerous this plan is? Of course he does. He told me. There is no perfect plan, but this can get the job done. He also said that with the help of Sino and the Traveler, our chance of success would increase significantly. I never blindly trust anyone, and I've always had a good eye for people. I think he made a number of valid points. It's my own choice to trust you. If I make the arrests alone, I can control myself and prevent you from getting hurt. But I can't guarantee that kind of discipline from the guards. To make the whole thing more convincing, you'll need to resist to some degree. Casualties are inevitable once push comes to shove. I'm okay with the deaths of enemies. But now that we're allies, I'm against the meaningless loss of our own. <laughs> I can't believe a Matro would actually care about us. I've lived a hard life, and I can say that people like you are hard to come by. I've always treated my allies with honesty and respect. They have the right to know important things like this. Now you're making this hard for me. Hey, is there something we can do to help? <laughs> I knew you would say that. Hmm. We can help fight some of the mercenaries, which should reduce the number of times you'll have to struggle directly with the guards. That should help at least a little bit. Sino, on behalf of my people, I thank you for your kindness. But this is a mission we cannot turn our backs on. We strongly value the lives of our friends, but the goal we are about to achieve is even more important. We have no fear of casualties, because we crave the spoils of victory. So please, lend us your support. We will show you the determination of us desert dwellers. Well, now that you've put it that way, I can no longer refuse. But remember, you need to follow the plan and not do anything reckless. Candace made it very clear that we can only achieve our goals if we can ensure our safety. Since you and I both recognize the significance of this operation, there should be no more animosity between the followers of the Dendrowarkon and those of King Deshret. Everyone's life is equally important. Okay, you have a deal. Let's do this for our shared dream. The guards should be stationed in the courtyard nearby. You can find them there. Researchers this timid? <sighs> what a pity. If only I knew her name. I see everything. I'll go back later. Honestly, I'm not that into drinking. Being deployed to Caravan Rebat is not bad. At least I won't have to deal with those obscure jokes anymore. That person I saw just now is probably a good fighter.
Guards! General Mahamatra! To... to what do we owe the honor? Keep your voice down. This is a secret operation. I'm going to arrest a large criminal gang near this location. According to the Academia's Guide and Regulations on Secret Operations, I have the right to ask for the cooperation of Caravan Rebot. Ah, of course, of course. Mahamatra Sina's order is the Academia's order. Just let us know what you need. But who exactly are you planning to arrest, and how many people are you expecting? Depending on the scale of this operation, we may need to report it to our superiors. They're a squad of Aramites whose number is comparable to Ein El Akmar in Port Ormos. They're involved in the theft and resale of supplies from the Academia. As many as Ein El Akmar? This should definitely be classified as a joint operation. Then I suggest that you report this to your superiors as soon as possible. And treat it as a top priority desert operation. I will need personnel. Got it! Please wait a moment, I'll contact them immediately. Because this is work. Because I trust you. Paimon can't believe you're still in the mood to chat. This whole thing has Paimon scared stiff! Aren't you even a little worried? What if these guards already know that you have betrayed the Academia and are no longer their General Mahamatra? Even if that guard doesn't know, their superiors might, right? We discussed this, remember? The Caravan Rebot operation is of great importance. But don't worry, the guards there shouldn't know that Sino has stepped down. How can you be so sure? First, the other Matras still don't know why Sino has left, which proves that the Academia has been covering up the matter. Second, this is a crucial moment for the Academia's God Creation Plan. If something were to happen to the General Mahamatra, it's bound to attract a lot of unwanted attention. No matter how you look at it, they don't seem interested in sharing the news of Sino's departure. A reasonable inference. I agree. Which brings us to our next issue. I'm sure some of you have been wondering if the prediction function of the Akasha will affect our operation. The Akasha is still in operation, so I must remain on high alert. Actually... Considering the power of the Akasha, it's quite strange that it hasn't already tried to interfere with my actions. I've given that a lot of thought. For now, I don't think you'll need to worry. If you remember, when you first came to Aru Village, all your actions and routes were predicted by the Akasha. It even gave that information to those who kidnapped the village keepers. But... Things like that never happened again after we met up with the Traveler. Hmm. That's true. But why? Look at it from a different angle. Why do you think the Akasha will predict your actions? Because my personal data has been entered into the Akasha. That's true. But the key to this question is, how well can the Akasha make predictions about a person? Haven't you ever thought about it? Just how can it do this in the first place? Because the Akasha controls the entirety of Sumeru. The Academia firmly believes that all human actions can be explained through logic. By sorting and analyzing entered data, the Akasha can derive behavioral logic and predict the actions of those who fit an existing logic model. However, at the risk of sounding like an advocate for fallacies, can everyone truly be considered logical at all times? Emotions are part of our behavioral logic, but can you guarantee that every experience of the same joy or pain would be equally intense? How can our feelings and opinions be predictable down to the letter in every single instance? Hmm. Sino, in the past, you've always worked alone. In the absence of another person who could sway you or your thoughts, the Akasha could produce predictions that were similar to your real-life behavioral principles. Decisive and principled, you were used to solving problems alone. That's why the Akasha could figure you out. But now, you've joined a team. 
and I believe the Akasha hasn't yet figured out the full composition of it. Our thoughts and logic have intermingled and weaved themselves together to become a complicated chaotic mess. Any one of us could potentially disagree with another. The Akasha lacks data on these interactions, and it's impossible for it to predict your actions in the future based on your decisions in the past. After all, there's probably a limit to just how much we can be modeled or controlled by data. So, in my opinion, you're probably safe for now. Hmm, huh, makes sense to me. I agree. The Akasha is not alive, and I don't think we can be completely controlled by something without a mind of its own. Huh. <sighs> Is that so? I guess there are things that even the Akasha cannot calculate, and people will not be forever trapped by the past. Whew! Paimon's so glad that this is settled! Next time, pay attention during our meetings. <sighs> Just remember to stay vigilant. General Mahamatra, we were not expecting your presence here. I'm the security officer of the Grand Deshret Desert District. My name is Luxembourg. Hmm. This is my assistant, the Traveler. He will be working with me. The construct next to him is for his work. Beep! Construct! Beep! What a great honor to meet you. Your golden hair is as bright as the sun. And... Uh, is this the latest technology from the Academia? Have you made a decision regarding the matter I mentioned to your subordinate? It seems to be a dire situation, so of course you will have our full cooperation. To be perfectly honest, I've always longed to go on a mission with someone as well known as yourself. There's no need for flattery. <clears throat> yes, sir. Take your most elite platoon and follow me to the eastern side of the district. We will carry out the operation there. Understood. <sighs> map. Hurry, bring the map! In two days, we will engage Rahman's Aramites and capture all of them. Any questions about the time or location? None at all, sir. Good. See you then. Yes, sir. Maybe hanging around the General Mahamatra isn't so bad after all. Everyone's so respectful towards us. This is all due to the absolute authority of the Academia. And now, we're going to strike back against that massive pillar of power. Get ready. We will move out in two days. Something on your mind again? Let's it's time for the operation! Let's go meet Sino in the desert! I see everything!
Wait a moment. Ah! Oh, it's you. You're my assistant, remember? Being my assistant, you must stay with me. Now let's head over there. It's General Mahamatra and his assistants. We meet again. Huh. You're here early. It's to show how important we think the operation is. Since this is a big case for the Academia, we are prepared to give it our best. I'm glad to hear your sense of resolve. Remember, we must capture them alive. They are our only leads for the case. If they die, we will be unable to continue the investigation. Understood. Everyone! The Aramites are approaching from the west! Make preparations and be ready for combat! Halt! Oh? What a warm welcome! What do you want? Judging from those shiny weapons in your hands, it seems like you're not interested in a deal. Ramon, the Academia has caught wind of your smuggling and illicit sales. If you value your life, I advise you to surrender. Who are you supposed to be? A Matra from the Academia? <laughs> I can't believe you came all this way just to catch us. I'm not here to talk. Oh. Nobody's given me this much time of day since I became a mercenary. Brothers! For that slight, let's wash our blades with their blood. Let's show them we Aramites are not to be messed with. Judgment is upon you. Your penance is due. You stay condemned. I see everything! Germinate! It's over. Ah! We have subdued them. The operation is now over. All Aramite mercenaries and related personnel in the area have been arrested. Ah, you pitiful Dendro Archon dogs! You'll regret this! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll regret it first. King Jeshred will curse you, and you will all! Silence! Oh, ah. Uh... Restrain them and take them back to Caravan Rebot. Count their numbers and send them to the Academia as instructed by the General Mahamatra. Yes, sir!
Mahamatra Sino. I will now take my leave. If you need further assistance, please come to Caravan Rebot and ask for me. Understood. You are dismissed. There they go. Let's talk elsewhere. This part of the plan went really well. Yes, things went perfectly. That's fantastic! And that punch you gave Ramon there sure looked convincing enough. Once we're done here, I'll return to Caravan Rebot and oversee the group's transport. I promise. I'll get everyone into Sumeru City safely. Yeah, you're the reason why everything went so well. <sighs> it's not the time to celebrate yet. Hmm. I believe Dia should already be waiting for you. Go join up with her. She will need you to introduce her to Tainari. Speaking of which, is it really okay for us not to share the full plan with Tainari? What if he'll feel miffed about it and refuse to work with us? I have a very close relationship with Tainari. Given how well we know each other, I believe my message alone should be enough to bring him to our side. He knows I won't make jokes about things like this. If we need help, Tainari is the best option. Get ready for the next phase of the plan. Don't keep them waiting. Going there. Dia! We're here! <laughs> it's about time. Didn't you say our part of the plan is the most important of all? <laughs> and here you come rolling in late. In the time it took you to get here, I already did five laps around the place, down seven drinks, and even did some clothes shopping. Uh, sorry. We didn't mean to keep you waiting. <laughs> I just wanted to fix your attitude and rub it in a little. After all, you took your sweet time getting here, and we've got important stuff to take care of. <laughs> I just like seeing that serious look on your face. All right, I'll stop. All joking aside, I'm glad you're here. Let's get moving and take care of this as soon as possible. Uh, but where should we start? Our responsibility is to get a status update on the Fatui Harbinger known as the Doctor. We need to make sure he won't get in our way when we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dealing with an institution that controls all of Sumeru is already hard enough. If the Doctor were to crash the party, it would be next to impossible for us to achieve our goals. Yeah, we sure don't want him showing up. Ooh, he really gives time on the creeps. Right? Hearing his name just reminds me of those stuffy old geezers in the academia. I'd rather not have to deal with someone like that. A 
According to the plan, we should first go to Pardis D.I. and ask for Forest Watcher Tainari. If all Haytham and Sino's sources are solid, then we can be sure that Tainari still has the Academia's trust. So, we'll find Tainari and convince him to get us the latest intel on the Doctor. Then, depending on what we learn, we'll make any necessary adjustments to our plan. The Sages have placed spies everywhere on the other side of the wall. I'll follow you as a bodyguard. <laughs> you should be honored. I don't offer my services to just anyone you know. But I meant that mercenaries would do anything for Mora. That's certainly true. But when multiple employers are vying for your services, you should always go with the best offer. Hmm, let's see. If I were to charge you a bill, I guess I can apply a discount. Uh, how much more do you want? I was not sure we can afford it. Hmm, how much do I want? Hey, how about paying me with a smile? What do you say? I haven't seen you smiling much recently. If you ask me, someone like you must look lovely when they smile. Come on, give me a smile so that I can be less worried. <laughs> Looking good! I hope this pretty smile will become our lucky charm. There are many kinds of smiles, but only a truly joyous one can bring blessings to others. Let's consider this smile a down payment for our future victory. Let's go. It's time to pay a visit to Party's DI. They all say Kisharawar gets the smallest budget, but I don't think Spontamod's treated any better. <laughs> Traveler, Paimon! And you are? Hey there. This is our friend Dia. She's an Aramite mercenary. A mercenary? Hmm, you must have some big news for me. It's something really important. Please help us out. All right. Then follow me. This place is better. We won't be disturbed by any passerby. Okay, what is this important thing you want to ask me? The doctor, huh? He's that strange-looking Fatui Harbinger with the mask! Paimon thinks he has blue hair. Yes, I know him. Uh, actually, he left Party's D.I. just a little while ago. Uh, he left already? Yeah, he came looking for me. Can I ask what it was about? Sorry to ask you like this after having just met, but your answer is very important to us. For now, all we can share with you is that your friend Sino is working with us. Sino, you say? Hmm. I see. So that's why he hasn't been at the Academia. Okay. I will answer your questions and will assist you any way I can. You don't have to tell me everything that's happened. <laughs> Sino's name really does work wonders. You're not even a little worried that we might have made it all up? 
Despite having just met you, I can sense that you're the serious type. Between you, the Traveler, and Sino, none of you strike me as the type that would conspire to deceive me. You don't need to tell me anything you don't want to. I'll also get straight to the point. The Harbinger you mentioned came to me because he wanted to take the scholar Hypatia away with him. Hypatia? Why would he want her? And what do you mean by take away? Is he planning to leave Sumeru? Yes. He told me his return to Snezhnaya is imminent. <sighs> so you mean... You're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis Di. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Your sources are accurate. No doubt because you recruited many informants. But you're right. Hapasia has indeed been receiving treatment from me. Forgive me for asking, but how's the treatment coming along? Given the way you're asking, I assume you have something to say. Since you asked, I'll be frank. I would like to take Hapasia to Snezhnaya. <sighs> it's incredibly difficult to transfer a patient. As a scholar yourself, shouldn't you at least be aware of this? Oh? I can't believe your utter lack of faith in me, to the point of even questioning my general level of knowledge. How unbefitting. Well, you're the only one who's ever made such a request. I have my ways of keeping her safe during the journey. In addition, I can also promise that under my care, Hapasia will receive the most advanced and effective treatment. I will personally supervise her treatment and see to her recovery. Would that be agreeable to you? Hapasia was born in Sumeru and remains a scholar of the Academia. Her situation has not become dire enough to necessitate her transfer to another nation. Transporting her to Snezhnaya is risky, and the potential benefits are unknown. As the person currently responsible for her treatment, I cannot possibly sign off on this transfer. Your suggestion is rude and reckless. I'll pass. I don't know much about the doctor, but after talking with him, I realized that, just like many other scholars, he possesses an aura of arrogance that I've come to detest. It's not so much that he's looking down on others, but more that he's so confident in himself and his abilities, to a point of near insanity. I would never refer a patient to someone like him. I prepared myself for a protracted battle of wits, and was really surprised to see him just give up on the topic. Still, his reaction really concerned me. <laughs> I see, I see. Of course, your opinion makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're still young, but already quite stubborn. I must say, you are not like what I had expected. <sighs> Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just let you off the hook like this. But unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today. What with Her Most Noble Majesty, the Tsaritsa, calling for our return. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. It's just as the Academia said. You're a responsible and gifted scholar. Sadly, even with all of that, you're still lacking a bit of shrewdness. And that's also why people like you can never realize that sooner or later, everyone must pay the price for what they've learned. can't help but feel like he's hinting at something unpleasant. He asked a question, yet didn't care for my answer. Perhaps I'm nothing but a talking rock in his eyes. He never came off as malicious, but an utter lack of compassion permeated throughout our conversation. From his tone, 
I can sense that he's always looked down on others. <sighs> I can barely believe it myself. But if that's true, the situation will be in our favor. I don't think I missed any details. Frankly speaking, I don't want you to do anything too risky. Now that you know a little more, it should be easier for you to stay safe. Sorry we can't tell you everything. We appreciate that you helped us anyway. I won't forget your kindness. It's okay. I have an obligation to do so. To be perfectly honest, all of this may have started because of me. Recently, my master wrote several letters to me, asking me to return to the Academia and assist him with his research. Hasn't he already asked you several times before? Yes, but there's something off about this most recent batch of letters. The handwriting and tone are both familiar, but some details have been omitted. My master will occasionally leave a few dots on the back of the letter. One dot means that he wrote the letter on a sunny day, and three dots stand for a rainy day. This has been a habit of his for many years, but I didn't find any dots in his recent letters. I believe... something may have happened to him. Huh. I get it. Since you are always at Gandarvaville, you would like me, someone already working at the Academia, to investigate this matter, right? I'd like to ask you to do that for me. If you can keep yourself safe. Please withdraw immediately at the first hint of danger. I can do that, but I have a feeling it won't be that simple. The Academia has been working on a big project. I'm not quite sure what it is, but your master might be involved with it. Hmm. If the higher-ups really are hiding something, then it will be difficult to remove myself from the situation once the investigation starts. If the situation becomes critical, I'll leave the Academia. If you don't see me there for an extended period, that's your cue. All right. We've got a plan. I'll stay at Gundarvaville to support you. If that scenario comes to pass, you must be extra vigilant. And be wary of any messages or direct requests from the Academia. I must say, I didn't expect a warning like this from the General Mahamatra. Being loyal to the Academia doesn't mean blindly doing whatever the Sages say. I know what I'm doing. On that note, aren't you also being quite distrustful of your alma mater? The Academia, yes, but my master is a man of integrity. Even when I was a student, I was worried he'd get in trouble for sticking to his beliefs. I suppose he's lucky to have lasted so long. But in the end still caught up to him. I see. So you noticed something was up with the Academia from the very beginning. This may well be how Sino became involved in all this. In that case, I must keep my promise and help you however I can. Also, if you run into Sino again, please help me pass on a message to him. Trust your own senses and experiences. I think this may be something he needs to hear right now. Okay, we'll find a chance to tell him! Thanks. Right. Now let's go hunt down this Harbinger. Oh, by the way, which way did the doctor go when he left Pardis D.I.? That way. Gotcha. Thanks so much. We'll be on our way. According to Tainari, the doctor is leaving Sumeru soon. I want to check if the doctor was actually telling the truth. He also said that he'll take care of everything before he leaves. What did he mean by that? We need to be extra careful when dealing with a person like him. Just to be safe, let's chase him and see what we find. But we have no idea where he went! How can we start chasing him? 
We'll do it the mercenary way. I'll find leads as we go. All you have to do is just follow me. <laughs> that Harbinger may have tried to cover his trail, but he still left some traces. Or perhaps he never even thought about concealing his whereabouts. Maybe that's just how arrogant he really is.